Hi and welcome to part two of a Calculus 1 video on critical values. So let's remember first that critical values had two pieces to their definitions. It's not only where the slope of that tangent line is zero, but it's also any new restrictions to the domain of f prime. So we need to look at the domain of the original, the domain of the derivative, and see if there's any new restrictions. So let's take a look. So if we're looking at this problem right here and we're just asked to find critical values, we would go ahead and start by finding the domain of this original function. So let's be careful because just because we see the square root symbol or the radical does not mean we actually have an even root. And if you look, we have an odd root. We have a third root. So what that means is I can have a negative value in my radicand because the cube root, for example, of negative eight is negative two. So my domain here is unrestricted, negative infinity to infinity. So let's go ahead and find the first derivative. If I look at a rewrite of my original function, this is x to the two-thirds minus x to the one-third, power over root. So the derivative of this function would be two-thirds x to the negative one-third, if you subtract one from that exponent, minus one-third x to the negative two-thirds, just doing power rule. I highly suggest a rewrite so we can see if our domain has changed. So in this rewrite, I have two over three x to the one-third minus one over three x to the two-thirds. And if I wanted to rewrite that with radicals, this looks like two over three times the cube root of x to the first, because again, it's power over root, minus one over three, and then it's the cube root of x squared, because again, power over root. So now if I look at this, I can identify my new domain of my derivative. I have still an odd root, so that doesn't necessarily restrict what x can be. x can be positives, negatives, or zero. However, that is in my denominator. So now x cannot be zero, or I have a new restriction. So when I'm listing out my critical values or critical numbers, I want to make sure I include x equals zero. Again, I'm not getting zero when I solve, but it will be an answer. It is one of my critical values because it's a new restriction to that domain. Okay, so let's set your first derivative equal to zero. You may prefer to see the radicals instead, and that's fine too. What I would recommend is add the one over three x to the two thirds to both sides. You can multiply both sides by three. You can also multiply both sides by, you know, an x. The one thing I cannot do is divide by x. But if I, for example, cube both sides, and I want to make sure I cube even the values, which maybe you wanted to divide by three first, and that's fine as well. But if I cube both sides, I get 27x to the first equals six cubed. So again, we might want to divide by three first, but if you don't, here's what you end up with, six cubed times x squared. 6 cubed is 216, but I can divide both sides by 27. That's the 8. I can set this equal to 0 by subtracting the x. I would never want to divide that out because then I'm losing potential answers. Zero product property there. Okay, so look, I got x equals 0 as an answer. But if we take a look, that is a domain restriction. X cannot equal zero. The only reason I got extra solutions that don't work, you got an extraneous solution, is because you cubed both sides. If we square both sides or cube both sides, sometimes we add answers onto our solution set that may or may not work. Those were called extraneous solutions. In this case, we know X cannot be zero specifically, so I would want to exclude it. The only reason it's part of my critical values list, remember, is that it was a new restriction to my domain. I'll add the x equals 1 8 to my critical values list. That is a solution of where my first derivative is 0. But the other critical value came from the idea that it was a new restriction. And again, that's just one technique of solving. Hopefully you have a technique of your choice from your college algebra course. Okay, let's look at another one. 
Certainly one option could be I could multiply this all out and expand the quantity x squared minus 1 because it's only cubed, but I'm just going to leave it and apply chain rule when I go to do the derivative. So let's stop and pause and find the domain because again I'm going to need to compare this domain to the derivative domain. So you need the domain of the original function. I can put anything in for x that I want. There certainly is no restrictions there. So let's go ahead and find the derivative. So f prime of x, I'll bring my exponent down, keep my base the same, subtract 1 from my exponent, chain rule times the derivative of what's inside would be times 2x. All right, let's pause and let's find this domain. All right, so the domain here, well, there's still no restriction. I still have basically a polynomial function if I multiplied it all out. I have no restriction for x, so I have no new restrictions, so I have no additional numbers to add to my critical values list. The only values that are going to be in my critical values list are going to be ones where my first derivative is equal to zero. So that's at x squared minus one equals zero, and that's where two x equals zero, because I already have it factored. So this is plus or minus one, and that is zero. So my critical values our x equals negative 1, positive 1, and 0. Okay, and last but not least for critical values here, square root of 9 minus x squared. Okay, this is the same thing as saying 9 minus x squared all to the 1 half when we go to get ready to do the derivative, but for now I might need to just look at domain, right? Just stop and pause and say, okay, what would my domain need to be? Well, you have a square root. So the radicand, or what's under the radical, needs to be greater than or equal to zero. So if we think about where is nine minus x squared equal to zero, we think of three and negative three, hopefully. Okay, so now let's think about which parts around negative three and three could be included. So for example, could x be zero? Sure, because nine is positive, right? So x can be zero, okay. How about could x be in this first section, like negative four or negative five? And that answer is no, because nine minus the quantity negative five squared would be nine minus 25, that's negative, that's not positive. So I can't have numbers in that first section. I only end up having numbers in between negative three and three, inclusive. And if you graph this, you kind of see a, a semicircle, if you will, or a half circle um, that only extends from x equals negative three to x equals three. Okay, so we have that domain. Let's go ahead and find g prime. I'll bring down my exponent. I'll keep my base the same, subtract one, chain rule or times the derivative of what's inside. I'll clean it up a little bit before I do the derivative domain. So that'll be negative x over square root nine minus x squared. Because you have one half of negative two x that gives you the negative x in the numerator, then the nine minus x squared being raised to the negative one half puts the square root in the denominator. So now I'll go ahead and stop and I'll say, okay, what is my domain? The domain of this derivative, well, it's still gonna have something to do with negative three and three because I still have that square root, but only now if x equals negative three, I'm in trouble because then that means my denominator is zero. I don't want my denominator to be zero. So now these are excluded values. So I have two new restrictions, x equals negative three and x equals positive three. Okay, so I have to make sure I include those in my critical values list in addition to whatever is going to make this first derivative zero. So I'm gonna set this first derivative equal to zero and when you have a rational equation like that, it's really where your numerator is zero because zero divided by any value is zero other than zero divided by zero. So I do get x equals zero. So I have one additional critical value to list. So I have three total critical values for that problem. This will conclude our video this time on critical values. If you wanted to see additional examples, there was a first video in this series here, but I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.